righty. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or whenever you may be tuning in to the Growing Our Future podcast. It's always a pleasure to bring special guests on that share their inside experiences to, to maybe just give us a little bit of information that helps our life journey, our professional growth, or career opportunities just a little bit better. And today is no exception. We're honored to have Les Hudson uh, with Ag Food and Natural Resources with the Texas Education Agency join us. Les, thanks for joining us. Oh, absolutely. Thanks for having me, Aaron. Les, so that I don't get all this wrong and we can make sure the editors get everything appropriately done. So you're, give us your official, your name, your title, and, and maybe a little bit of how you came into your posi position. Absolutely. Uh, so, like Aaron said, my name is Les Hudson. I am a CTE educational specialist at TEA, and I'm the statewide coordinator for agricultural food and natural resources. Actually, this job is, is something that has just accumulated over my entire career, starting probably whenever I was in high school mm -hmm. in, in ag programs. Everything that I do in this job goes back to when I was in the FFA, when I was an ag teacher, when I was a CTE administrator, I use all of those um, experiences in the job that I have today. So it's, uh, it's really nice to be able to take those experiences and use them at the state level. Well, we appreciate you taking a little time to share with us today. And hopefully we'll share a little information that you know, the viewers will be obviously not just Texas, they're going to be nationwide. So they'll give them a little bit of insight into maybe how uh, our Ag Food Natural Resources courses work within Texas. And also for FFA members and teachers, maybe some insights that they didn't understand about what you do. So uh, again, thank you for taking a little time to join us. With that said, I start every podcast off asking the same question. Les, what are you grateful for today? Today, I'm grateful for the rain. That's uh, something that we really need, but I'm really grateful for my family, my friends, and community. Um, love being part of a community where people come together to help others. It's just, uh, it's great to be part of a community and part of a family and, and, and have a, that, that set of friends that you can always go to. Couldn't and, agree with and, you more. <laughs> And how great is it to live in a country that we don't rely on anybody else for agricultural products? Yeah, it, it doesn't, you know, I, and I know you know this, it doesn't take you long to look around and realize that a lot of the problems that we think we have are really kind of first world problems sure. that we're really blessed with a lot of abundance. Um, you know, I, I was walking through the, the grocery store the other day and it really hit me when I kind of looked around at how many different types of Doritos there were. And, and then and then I went to the toothpaste aisle and it's like a whole aisle of nothing but toothpaste. And I thought, wow, we've really got tough problems here. So I agree with you. Uh, you know, when you have a, a blessed, when you have a nice family and a great community, a good job, and you look around at just how fortunate we are to have the freedoms and liberties that we have, uh, yeah, we got some problems, but you know what, Les, we're in the kid business, Absolutely. and that, that, that means we get an opportunity to maybe empower some minds that'll one day kind of figure some of this stuff out, and that's kind of encouraging along the way as well. Couldn't agree more. All right, Les, so let's jump into what you do at the Texas Education Agency. So a lot of times we throw around a lot of acronyms, and people don't always understand what those are and why we throw them around. So we're going to start with the simplest one, and that is CTE, Career Technical Education. And Les, yeah. you are a statewide CTE coordinator, and you're over AFNR, which is Ag Food and Natural Resources. Les, tell us how many CTEs are there in the state of Texas and kind of what your role is with AFNR. Well, gosh, Aaron, that first question is, is, is pretty difficult to nail down because actually CTE programs are, are growing all over, the state, uh, all over the state of Texas. I think it's great that ed education has, has gone and really put in it, the importance to CTE. And, and we, we have this, we, we have this 
priority at TA, it's career and college ready. Career and college ready, think about that. It's not or, it's and. We want students to be able to do whatever it is that they wanna do whenever they get out of high school and not necessarily have to go back to school to do that. Mm -hmm. So if you wanna go into a career, you're ready for that. If you decide later that you wanna go um, on and, and further your education, you're ready for that. If you wanna go straight from high school to um, a post-secondary program, you should be ready for that. So I'm very excited that we, we're trying to make sure that every student has the opportunity to do what they wanna do once they leave school and, and give them those, those set of skills that in the past, CTE, unfortunately, were, were kind of elective courses. We just, just kind of took them to fill in the, the mm -hmm. schedule sometime. And you know, we had our, our, our ag students that took every ag course that they could, and I was definitely one of those. But you know, now that we have the programs of study and, and we're really developing skills so that students, whenever they get out and they graduate, they, they have that skill to, to, to get a job or, or to move on in that post-secondary. And I, I just think that that's a, a huge um, uh, win for everybody, something that, that hasn't always happened. How many less in, in, in the Texas Education Agency, how many courses are there in ag food and natural resources? I hadn't counted them in a while. We have six programs of study, probably about, probably just around 60, Aaron, by the time that you take the innovative courses. Yeah, that's what I, re I remember. I, and I didn't mean to load you up with that trick question, but I do know exactly what you're saying. So you got these six programs of studies, but through all of that, you've got some innovative courses and some real unique opportunities for students to learn. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, some of those courses are kind of developed. Most of them are developed for statewide, but some of them have some unique ways to fit in to the different parts of Texas so that, that a student that is growing up in East Texas can have some of those courses that, that would really prepare them for a career there. Mm -hmm. That a kid down um, in South Texas, there's there's courses that could really prepare them. Like I said, you know, most of our courses are are designed to be focused on the statewide level, but the opportunity to really take something and tailor it for your region um, is something that, with all the courses that we have, that's a that's a very unique and and very great opportunity. That is a great point, Les. Because Texas is a big state. I mean, it is really, very diverse from the southeast swampy bayou area all the way up through the piney woods of East Texas. Mm -hmm. And you move over through the red dirt area that I live in in North Texas, all the way over to the flat West Texas, the Llano Estacado, and then go back down through the Big Bend and all the way down to the heart of Texas, to the Rio Grande Valley. It is a very diverse state which means that the job and career opportunities could also be diverse. So the fact that the Texas Education Agency and school districts can work together to create those more regional learning and career opportunities, I think is, is just an awesome, awesome prospect. It is, it is. And when we look at the state of Texas, the majority of school districts in the state of Texas have an AFNR program, and that's exciting too. I know that we have 1,082 FFA chapters. Uh, we have, that means that we're, we, you know, our membership's a little over 155,000 with about 230,000 plus students enrolled in ag science courses. Les, in your role as statewide CTE coordinator for a teacher that may be watching this right now, okay, I know who Ray Pionzik is and I know what the ATAT does. I know who Jennifer Jackson is, and I know what the FFA does. And Alejandro, he's over there shaking hands with the, at the corporate folks. He's our development guy. Les, how do you describe, if, if, if a teacher out there wasn't really sure, what is Les Hudson's role? Tell us so that maybe they can understand when it comes to Texas team, and I'm going to be the first to brag on Les, y'all. So here, let me say this. Number one, we are Texas team ag ed. 
we do not operate in, in, in as individual islands. We have to operate as a team. And I will tell you, yes, the Ray Pionzics, the Jennifer Jacksons, the Aaron Alejandros of the world, a lot of times by virtue of the work we do, we're the ones that you see. Well, let me say this. You don't have to be loud to be heard. You do not have to be loud to be heard. And this man right here, Les Hudson, he is the curriculum guy for the state of Texas. And I'm going to tell you, that is a very important component to Texas Team Aggette. So, Les, maybe for a teacher or a student who's listening, tell us a little bit about what that role entails. Absolutely. And I will tell you, it changes every day. So a big part of what I do is, is I'm there when teachers or um, school districts or administrators need help when they don't understand or, or they just need to um, understand how to, to go forward with a um, agricultural food and natural resources program of study. If they're looking for particular um, courses and what are the requirements um, and even to extent, you know, um, making, you know, uh, the connection to the curriculum that's out there for these courses. So, so there's, there's all of that. We're, we're always having to look ahead. You know, we, we don't get to just work for, for what's going on today, but we're always looking at what's going to happen tomorrow. You know, agriculture and, and, and CTE are just moving so quickly and the, the technology and the opportunities um, that, that we're trying to make sure that, that what, we're, what we're teaching in our courses is not only going to prepare students for jobs that are available today, but those jobs that will be there in the future. Um, so I spent a lot of time looking at data. I spent a lot of time on the phone, spent a lot of time doing emails, um, trying to make sure that, that I don't know everything that, that I need to know, but I know who to call. So I want to make sure that, that we know who's out there and what they're doing um, and make those connections. So, so when we start moving forward and we start looking at, at the TEKS or we start looking at programs of study, uh, we've got to make sure that, that we're doing that with the industry's help because you know um, they're the ones that, that know where we're going and they're the ones that, that know what we need. So um, if, if I was gonna wrap up my job in a nutshell, mainly I'm, I'm here to help people that have any kind of CTE program, but agricultural food and natural resources in particular, whether it's a teacher, whether it's a school district, whether it's a student and a parent, um, we get a lot of those calls. Um, so I do a lot of technical assistance. And we appreciate that, by the way. And that, that's something that I like to share with everybody. A anybody that watches us function as Texas Team Ag Ed, I wanna be very clear, there are no hidden agendas. Uh, we, we do not, we operate with transparency and it's important to us as a core value to operate with transparency. And with that comes good service. What Les just said is absolutely right. If you're a parent out there or a student and you're unsure of, of maybe how education operates within the state or you're not really sure about a program and you're not really sure who to call, there he is right there. We call Les Hudson and Les can get, kind of get us pointed. There are times where it may be a teacher issue, we're gonna point them to Ray Pionzik. There's times it may be an FFA contest issue or an event issue, we may post uh, push them toward Jennifer Jackson. It could be a potential sponsor and they're gonna send them my way. But the one thing for sure is that we all operate in a way where we're very clear and we want everybody to know that we have an open door policy. And I know that Les operates that way as well. Oh, thank you for that, Aaron. So with that, Les, you said something a while ago, and here we go again. We throw around these letters, and you said TEKS, TEKS. <laughs> so for those that are listening, because folks outside of Texas will be listening to this, Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills, yeah. we refer to those as TEKS. They are right. kind of, as you would say, educational standards that all courses must meet within the state of Texas. Les, Give everybody kind of an overview of what you mean when we say TEKS. So it's kind of the roadmap to the course. You know, we don't we don't tell people how to teach, but we do tell them what they need to teach. Um, and it's important that um, everything that that is lined out in those TEKS have been um, 
vetted by industry, have been vetted by people, by um, seasoned teachers, um, say seasoned AF and R teachers. Um, they, they've also been looked at to make sure that for one, that, that they're appropriate for uh, the amount of time that's gonna be spent in class. So if it's a one credit course, we wanna make sure that uh, the TEKS fill up most of that time. We, but we also want to, to give teachers that autonomy to teach the TEKS and go beyond the TEKS. You know, we, we don't wanna just say, you know, that, that they're gonna spend their entire time trying to get all these TEKS in. So we keep it to where they can teach the TEKS, but then again, go beyond the TEKS. As we move to program of study, we're moving our TEKS where they're starting to kind of scaffold. Those things that are, that are introduced in a principles of agriculture course will actually scaffold. And, and as they go through the level two, the level three courses, the level four courses, they're going to build on those skills. Um, so we're really excited about that as we move from courses that are kind of standalone courses to courses that actually um, build on, on the previous course and those skills. Okay. So again, I'm trying to paint a big picture here. Sure. So we got the Texas Education Agency. And in that agency, we have college and career readiness programs, military okay. readiness programs. We have career technical education. We got Les Hudson right there, who's career technical. And he's over AFNR, which has six programs of study and a bunch of different innovative courses and courses that students can take. And now you understand that those courses have to meet certain requirements called the TEKS. Now with that last, there's another one that we're gonna talk about, CTE, Career Technical Education, and that is weighted funding. So what a lot of people don't understand is, is that you know an English teacher and a math teacher and a history teacher, they're gonna receive X amount of funding per students in their classroom. That supplements that, that teacher, it supplements that educational experience for that student. Well, in the world of career technical education, we get just a little bit more money. It's called weighted funding. Les, why do career technical education courses get weighted funding? What does that mean? That's a great question. One of the reasons that, that they get weighted funding is because it, CTE courses to, to be taught the way they have to be taught are very expensive. I mean, these are, these are, are, are not courses that a student just reads a book and then completes an exam at the end. They're actually going out into facilities that were designed for students to get those hands-on skills, whether it's an ag shop where students are learning those welding skills, those electrical skills, those structural, um, or if it's a, um, a greenhouse where students are going in and they're actually um, producing those plants or floral design where they're actually putting those floral designs together. Those are very expensive courses. And so it, it takes more money than a lot of our traditional courses do. And, and it's important because, you know, um, what, what we do within those four years, and remember high school for most of us only lasts four years, we've got to make sure that we get it right. right. And we need to make sure that, that we're teaching students with equipment, that they're going to use whenever they get out. If it's out of date, then we're not doing those students justice, uh, teaching them something that they're not going to use once they get out there. Mm -hmm. So um, that weighted funding is huge. Now, on that weighted funding, Les, so I'm, I'm listening to you speak, and I'm listening as I'm a, I'm a parent out here, I'm a community member, I'm a business mm -hmm. owner, and I hear all of a sudden that we got this br brand new career technical education center, and we have all these kids going mm -hmm. over there, and we're getting weighted funding. Does all of that money have to go into that CTE course or does the school district get some of that money? And that is correct. The school district does get some of that money, Aaron, but the school district gets money from every single course that's out there, not just CTE. Right. Um, you know, so anytime that a student's in a course, the, the school is going to get some of that funding. Um, so a portion, just to make sure everybody understands, obviously we're okay with that. We're just saying that, that weighted funding comes in, but not all of that weighted funding will go to that program. Some of that money may be used by the administration for the administration over that program. And, and all the other things that, that are required to run a school, um, you know, those administrative counselors, all those other positions, other um, costs that are associated with running a school. 
So Les, as we continue going down this path of just the important role that you play in agricultural science educators within career technical education and the Ag Food and Natural Resources uh, career cluster, we also have a thing called CTSOs, Career yeah. Technical Student Organizations, CTSOs, Career Technical Student Organizations like the FFA. And the way I liken that when I explain it to sponsors, a lot of times people say, well, Aaron, I don't understand. You talk about classroom, you talk about this. And I said, well, think of it this way. It's kind of like going to college and it's lecture and lab. So I go to my ag science classroom and my instructor, Mr. Hudson, introduces me to livestock management. Well, then through the FFA, I may choose to participate in a livestock evaluation contest, or I may participate in a livestock agri-science fair project, or I may participate in a public speaking contest. So what happens is, is I go to lecture in the classroom and then my laboratory becomes the FFA experience. Les, how many CTSOs are there in the state of Texas? I think Again, it's nine. I don't lately, but yeah, I think nine is correct. Um, but, but your analogy is spot on. You know, the FFA is where students get to take that knowledge from the classroom and apply it. We, we get a lot of feedback from industry and, and a lot of the stakeholders always come back to this. Well, we need you to teach soft skills. We need those students to, to have those uh, personal skills that, that they can communicate with others, that, that they can work as a team. And I can't think of a greater organization than the FFA where, where, where that's exactly what those students are getting out of it. Where else are you going to get to stand up in front of your peers and in front of um, adults and present? Where are you going to get the opportunity to be critiqued by others so that you can get better within an area? You know, there's so many different opportunities in the FFA that you know, maybe maybe this one contest isn't your thing, but there's another contest out there that is fit for you. And, and you know, when we look at, at, at the FFA and, and what it does, and, and those students, while they're students, they're already building that network so that whenever they get out, they're going to know people out there. They're going to know adults. They're, they're going to know college professors whenever they get out. What, what other organization really introduces students to the real world better than the FFA. I just can't think of anyone. Well, you know, I'm like you, Les. I'm a little bit biased. But, you know, I, I guess at the end of the day, if I'm a parent or I'm somebody out here listening to this, career technical student organizations are important. And here's the reason why. Number one, you're allowing that kid to compete with their skill set against their peers. So they're getting a chance to really show their inside expertise, communication skills, teamwork skills within a discipline, within a, within a focus. And I think that is a good thing, no matter which CTSO that is. I think they, they're building professional networks, like you said, Les. They're getting to know people across the country, across the state that have a very similar interest that if that becomes a career opportunity, well, now I have a professional network of people I could call on to sell, to be my colleagues, to be my advisors. So I think there's a lot of value in an active CTSO program to every community. If I were in the Chamber of Commerce, I would want to know what, are, what is my local school district doing with the CTSOs? Those professional networks will one day grow the future of our city or lack of participation could also hinder the growth of our city. So I see CTSOs as playing a very critical role in the overall balance of that education experience. Would that be fair? It's, it's fair. And we talked about those teaks. That experience is written into those teaks. That's right. Well, lastly, in the world of ag science education, Les, We've talked about our teachers. We've talked about the TEKS. We've talked about career technical. We've talked about CTSOs. And there's one more component to all this. It's called the SAEs, the Supervised Agricultural Experience. And that could be science. It could be job-based. It could be actually raising an animal, a fish, a lizard, a tarantula, 
I mean, it, it's a anything that has that agricultural experience that a teacher can help supervise and help that kid understand best practices and record keeping and all that. Les, tell us about the importance of an SAE. Well, there again, and it's, it's taking all of those skills that you've learned and applying them. You know, so um, it's, the, it's the opportunity for students to, to, to find that niche, find that area that, that they really love, and then take what they've learned and, and put into it. And, and like you said, you know, so many people think that, that an SAE is, is simply raising an animal for a livestock show. That's, that's absolutely one of them, but that's just one of so, so many. I mean, SAEs are, are just about as big as imagination can go. Um, there, are, there are just so many different opportunities, but, but really and truly, it's, it's the opportunity to, to work hard and develop something and see it from a thought to an actual um, product or um, an actual finished, you know, um, project, and, and that that's an amazing thing to be able to to take something and and see it from from the ground up. And so, you know, again, employers, this is what employers are looking for. Employers are working looking for people that are going to be um, motivated, that are going to work hard, that are going to, you know, do the work. And the SAE is, is kind of that bridge, if you would, between the classroom and getting out of the classroom into a career. And, and that, that CTSO, FFA in our case, is, is just that opportunity to, to bring that along with it. So, I mean, it's, it, it takes all three, you know, if all you're going to do is sit in a classroom, you're just not going to get the whole experience. I couldn't agree with you more. And uh, when, when we paint this big picture, Les, when we think about everything that we just talked about, we got some amazing, amazing educators. Educators that get in that classroom that have a job that's very unique compared to their peers. When you're in agricultural science, you're in the, to, to world issues. You're into science issues. You're into sustainability issues. You're into consumer demands. You're into conservation. You're into natural resource management. It is amazing what an ag science teacher has to do. But in addition to all that they do, then we've saddled them also with this CTSO component. And we've told them they got to train teams and they've got judging teams and leadership teams and speaking teams. And they're going to go to competitions and they're going to be traveling across Texas and across the country to let their students learn and build professional networks. Then on top of all that, then we give them the, 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 the responsibility of overseeing a project, a supervised agricultural experience project. And our teachers have to go out and help students acquire animals and, and re project resources and the result of everything that we do less, we know it because we had it researched. The result of what we do is we know that our students graduate at a higher rate than their peers. They go to college at a higher rate than their peers. They finish college at a higher rate than their peers. They have access to more scholarship than their peers. They're recruited ahead of athletes and even ahead of National Honor Society kids. And we know this is not because we said so, because we had it researched and then validated by an independent third party. Our students, Les, because of our program that you oversee, our students have a competitive edge. I tell students all the time, there are over 3,000 high schools in the state of Texas. Every one of them are gonna have a senior class. And every one of them are gonna be looking for a job, a scholarship, or an opportunity. And the question is, what separates you from them? And when you listen to what our program has to offer in terms of coursework, in terms of professional network, in terms of hands-on experience and competitive edge, I would say that an ag science kid and CTE kids, they, they, they probably have something that those on the outside would be looking at going, that's the kind of person I want working here. Would you agree? Absolutely, absolutely. I would. I would invite anybody that has the opportunity to um, get to a state FFA convention. If it's if it's televised, watch it. I mean, you will be amazed with the the, the students that are part of the the program, part of FFA. 
you know, if uh, at any time you ever get down about the future, but what you have to say, you'll get excited about where we're headed. You get excited about those leaders that are coming up. Les, thank you for taking some time today to join us. Uh, I'm excited about the role that we get to play. I tell people all the time, you know, I, I work with a lot of business folks, executives, and we have a lot of discussions about trends and best practices. And we talk about organizational structure and alignment. And we, we have all these deep philosophical conversations. And for them, it's about their profit margins and about how they operate a business. But in our world, we're in the kid business. And I always tell people we're in the future business. I think Abraham Lincoln gets attributed a quote. He said that the philosophy of the schoolroom in one generation will be the philosophy of government in the next. And so I really take serious what we do. Because as I'm fond of saying, if you want to know what the future is, grow it. Well, to grow the right future, you got to plant the right seeds. <laughs> You've got to nurture those seeds. And then you got to grow those young people to be the strong citizens of character and dependability that, that our country was built on. And Les, that's, that's a very unique role that we get to play. And we appreciate what you do uh, at the Texas Education Agency. Well, thanks so much. And uh, I mean, I'm just so proud to be here and I'm just so proud to be a part of it. And well, that's all we had for today. Whoa, no, 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 back up. I got one last question for Les. Les, I almost oh. forgot my fun question. I always get to ask just one fun question before we hang up. Les, what is the best concert you've ever been to? The best concert I've ever been to? I'm going to say George Strait. How can you go wrong with King George? How can you go wrong with King George? You know, he didn't have to do anything fancy. He just gets up there and sings. And everybody everybody in the audience is just memorized. I mean, you know, I could I could just sit there forever and listen to George sing. King George, that's good, Les. We got, uh, I told my kids something very similar one day about King George. And I said, you know, here you, you think about, uh, if anybody's listening out there that can help me pull this off, we're working on a project one of these days. One of these days at the FFA convention, I want, George Strait, Willie Nelson, Don Henley. Can't oh, wow. get Waylon Jennings. I can't get Waylon because he's passed, but his son Shooter's around. Pat Green. And I would like to get some of these folks who have influenced music, rock and roll music, country music, and they all wore the blue and gold Texas FFA jacket. And I think it would be awesome to have Texas FFA influencers stand on a stage at the state convention one day. That'd be incredible. Absolutely incredible. And, you know, I think you just started to scratch the list. Oh, well, Les, think about where we, where we go down that path. All of a sudden, now we've got influencers in business. We got influencers in medicine. I know that the man that gave me my Lone Star degree is one of the top heart surgeons in the Houston area. I mean, there are so many people that have become influencers, but their career started in that blue and gold jacket. So thank you for mentioning King George, by the way. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining the Growing Our Future podcast. We'll catch you at the next episode. Be sure to tune in. We'll have another subject matter expert who's willing to share seeds of greatness that we can plant, nurture, and grow a better future. Les, thanks for joining us. Thank you all. Thank you all so much. Thank you.